Um, next up, we have Dr. Matt Kuhn. Well, Matt is a social environmental scientist at CSIRO. He co-leads CellTemp and specialises in the design and implementation of socioeconomic monitoring programs. Over to you, Matt. Thank you. I acknowledge the traditional owners of this land, the Turbul and Yagara peoples, and pay respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. Um, I'm presenting today on behalf of my CSIRO colleagues and our partners in this project, the, the Social and Economic Long Term Monitoring Program, or CELTEMP, uh, which is funded by the partnership between the Australian Government's Reef Trust and the Great Barrier Reef Foundation. And CELTEMP benefits from guidance and support from the Reef Authority, Queensland Office of the Great Barrier Reef, the Regional Report Cards Network, and several other key partners. So CELTEMP has been around for a decade now, but for those who are unfamiliar, it's, it's a monitoring program that helps to improve our understanding of human dimension components of the Great Barrier Reef as a social ecological system. So the sorts of things we monitor include those uh, on the screen there and other aspects of reef users and communities' relationship with the reef. So how does CELTEMP help reef management? Well, the first thing we do is gather time series data to evaluate progress towards those five human dimension objectives in the Reef 2050 plan. And the second is to drive adaptive management. How? Uh, by helping to better understand reef users and community groups, enabling more effective in and purposeful engagement, um, by providing feedback on reef governance, and by improving our system understanding, including how natural events or reef management initiatives affect people and vice versa. So today, I'm going to present just four um, very high level descriptive results from our surveys of the Great Barrier Reef catchment resident population. Uh, this is from June last year. It was an online survey and we had just under two and a half thousand respondents across the region, as shown. So this was the third survey in a time series. Previous iterations in 2013 and 17, um, each surveyed a couple of thousand respondents asking many of the same questions. Um, but we changed uh, a few things in 2021. So in previous years, the surveys were done face to face and they were done in coastal towns. Um, so because of the expanded geography and a change in the method uh, in the following results that I present, the time series comparisons are based on a subsample of residents who had visited the reef in the previous 12 months. Okay, result number one. So this is the first question we ask in our survey in an open-ended format. So what are the first words that come to your mind when you think of the Great Barrier Reef? And here we've color-coded the words for basic sentiment. So blue words have a positive association in the Great Barrier Reef context and red words are negative. And the bigger the word, the more frequently it was mentioned. So the biggest words, um, beautiful, coral and fish are the most prominent in all three years. And at first glance, these three word clouds look similar to each other but closer examination shows changing proportions of red and blue and the new words and concepts emerging over time. So in 2017, we saw a big increase in negative sentiment uh, with red words like bleaching, climate change, dying and endangered standing out in the middle word cloud. In 2021, that negative sentiment seems to have subsided and we see an increase in positive sentiment. So there's more blue. Um, and there is a trend over this time series, which is an overall increase in emotive words and a decline in neutral ones. Result number two. So this is from the question, what do you think are the three most serious threats to the Great Barrier Reef? And here we can see some big changes over the last decade. If you follow the top ribbon from 2013 on the left, the top ranked result then was shipping. This perceived threat is far less prominent in 2021, and now climate change is ranked number one. So while the scientific consensus has been telling us that climate change is the greatest threat for a long time, it seems popular awareness in the Great Barrier Reef region has only recently caught up. And to what can we attribute this change? Well, probably at least two things, um, one being media representations of climate change and the reef over this time, and two being the extreme climatic events that most Australians have now personally experienced in recent years. Result number three. So looking from left to right on the graph. So while trust in scientific institutions has consistently been ranked the highest among our listed information sources about the reef, um, we observed a significant drop in these rating scores from 2017 to 2021. Um, next along for the Reef Authority, looking back to 2013, we can see that 
um, their mean trust rating was relatively low and that their ratings increased significantly in 2017 with no significant change to 21. Um, interestingly also, from 2017 to 21, we saw significant declines in trust ratings for international NGOs and also for people's trust in their family, friends and work colleagues. So we can't pinpoint the exact cause for these changes, but over the last few years we have seen a lot of contested narratives in media reporting around the reef and of reef and water quality science. Okay, my fourth and final result, a snapshot from 2021 only, and these are new questions to be tracked going forward. So this shows mean ratings on a scale of one to 10 of the perceived importance or level of community support for a range of reef protection and management initiatives as shown on the left. So while there's a lot that can be unpacked here, I've only got time to give you a quick summary of the big picture, which is that the majority of catchment residents recognise these initiatives are important. And 70% felt that more protection and management initiatives were needed. But that level of public recognition and support varies across the list, and for each initiative, there are sceptics. So these results are complementary to the social licence research being done by colleagues um, here from RAP, which we'll learn more about this afternoon. So what can we take home from these four findings? Well, first and foremost, um, human dimensions of the reef are changing, some things rapidly, like when there's an extreme event. And this includes people's values, perceptions and attitudes. Uh, and in future surveys, we may also see changes in their support for management initiatives. So understanding how and why these things change over time can help us to engage with the community more effectively and to make better decisions. My second point is a question. Has the Great Barrier Reef become an increasingly emotive subject? And if so, what risks and challenges does this present for reef science and management? Um, thirdly, it seems we've passed a tipping point in the last few years, at least in the Great Barrier Reef catchment, where the majority of people now recognise the seriousness of the climate threat. Now, this might open up opportunities for pursuing new or stronger adaptation and mitigation initiatives, but parts of the community still hold sceptical views and so should be engaged carefully and purposefully. So my fourth and final point is related to those above, is that trust in institutions and between members of the community has been eroded. And I think as scientists and reef managers, we must strive to rebuild that trust. And whatever it is the Reef Authority did between 2013 and 17 to increase their trust ratings is something on which we should probably reflect and learn from. Um, so in the spirit of transparency and a desire to build greater trust in reef social science, um, the CELTEMP team has invested a lot of effort to make our results and our data more accessible. So the results I've shown today were hopefully just enough to arouse your further interest because on our website, you can explore the data yourself um, using our shiny new data visualization dashboards. And you can download the raw data sets for your own research. And of course, you're welcome to read our long and boring technical reports. Um, and if you'd like to collaborate and use these data, we'd love to hear from you. Um, thank you very much.